Okay, now that you've learned how to do some basic prediction uh, with the linear regression, you've learned how to reduce the number of independent variables down to the most relevant set, let's go through a, th through a few of these regression models, starting here with ordinal regression. So here I'm going to pull up the actual documentation on each of these as we go along. Ordinal regression is useful when your dependent variable isn't a continuous number, but um, more of a scale or a rank ordering. So for example, let's say we ask a survey question. Uh, about someone's satisfaction. On a scale of 1 to 7, uh, how satisfied are you with this product? 1 equals very not satisfied, 7 equals very satisfied, something like that. So that's not an observed measure. It, rather, it's a ranking or ordered measure. An ordinal regression will be more accurate for predicting that than a linear regression. So everything we're, we're going to review now, all these different regression options, uh, linear regression is a very common baseline that's been used for decades that can be used for all of these scenarios. But these different options we're about to go through uh, here uh, uh, can be more, uh, the, uh, everything other than linear regression, these others can be more accurate in, uh, and much more accurate in specific cases. So ordinal regression, specifically in the case where we have ordered data. So the example Microsoft uses, imagine uh, trying to predict students' test scores. A standard linear regression would be best there because they vary on a continuous scale, can be measured. However, predicting class ranking using an ordinal regression model. There's not an underlying uh, observable measure. Um, rather, it's class rank, kind of like a survey question. When we measure satisfaction, there's not a perfect scale, continuous scale to measure this on. Rather, it's indicated by ordered one through seven results anyway. So, you know, a perfect um, example of using this ordinal regression actually would be to go back and predict that education column from our bike buyers. Uh, let's go back here. This uh, Let's do this one right here. And let's predict education because remember it was rank ordered. We had that education numeric field, um, yet the differences be from one education level to another weren't necessarily always equal, like from partial high school to high school and from high school to partial college. Those were rank ordered. Um, but let's see if we can... Uh, predict that better, use that field um, to do a better job of predicting. So I'm going to go back here. Let's copy this training experiment. Save as uh, bike buyers prediction. I'm actually going to change this to, yeah, no, bike buyers or ordinal regression. Perfect. Where did our stuff go? Oh, there it is. Okay, let me move this over here. All right, what I want to do is uh, get rid of, come on, seriously, there we go. Get rid of linear regression. Let's pull in our ordinal regression. And you'll notice ordinal regression is a bit different. It actually needs an input into it, but we'll come back to that in a second. Um, I guess we can leave all these select columns though. Let's mess with this one for a moment. Uh, what we want now is to say we are we're going to predict education numeric. Let's give it a purchase bike and education, and let's train model using not purchase bike numeric but education numeric. Okay. And actually, to compare it against, let's go back and pull our linear regression back in first and see what R-squared we're going to get first, just predicting education numeric using a regular linear regression as our baseline. Let's run that. Let's see. Uh, pause here. Okay, let's uh, take a look at our R-squared. Not bad. So we did have a lot of correlation between education and a lot of other variables, so I'm not too surprised here. But R-squared of 47 uh, almost 48%. Great. So back here, let's remove our linear regression. Pull in our ordinal regression. Connect. Uh, ordinal regression needs a two-class classification model to go into it. So we'll learn about these more a little bit later. But let me just grab two-class logistic regression. Basically, these things, again, are used for uh, ca categorizing or classifying categorical dependent variables. So an ordered dependent variable like education, it's not really numeric, although it is made up of numbers. Those numbers aren't continuous. 
it's a rank ordering of education and the distance between each level of education is not necessarily the same. So what we do is we bring in a classification algorithm into this ordinal regression and then train our model. So let's go ahead and run that. And I'll pause it while we wait here. All right, let's see what we've got here. Evaluate model. Okay, so I forgot to mention before, we don't get R squared here with an ordinal regression like we do with the linear regression. But we do get some other measures that are comparable. Root mean squared error. So think of this as, um, let's see, a smaller number is better. This is going to range on the same range of, of, our, uh, of our scale here. So our scale for education was uh, 1, I think 1 to 5 is what it was, something like that. So let's compare this number. Uh, so lower means more accurate here. And let's compare that to what it was with a linear regression. So 0.764 to, go back real quick. Train that one one more time. Okay, let's see what we get. Visualize. Here we go, root mean squared error. Okay, cool, it's a bit lower. Before we had 0.746. So a slightly lower uh, level of error, which means a more accurate prediction. So again, linear regression was pretty good. Um, ordinal regression, because the context of our dependent variable uh, was ordinal rather than just any old continuous number, this uh, performs slightly more accurately.